Hello. Okay. Chapter 5 talks about the Eastern churches and the liturgy that is encompassed in them. The book states that in the Eastern churches, liturgy has changed very little since the 9th century. Orthodox Christian worship is the pinnacle of the traditional historical worship that has sprang up from the Jerusalem church of the 4th century and that over time people have come together and compacted it and made it firm. The book states that there are several divisions of these churches, uh, really this three. The first is the monophysite position that sprang up in Egypt during the 5th century. Those of this position hold strongly to the singular nature of Christ. The liturgy that they practice is now known as the Coptic and Ethiopic rites. The second position is that of one of the churches under the original Pentarchy. These sprang up in Antioch and Syria. The West Syrian family was known as the Melkites, and they accepted the Chalcedonian doctrine and adopted <coughs> excuse me, the liturgy of Byzantium. The East Syrian family was known for being unmatched rivals to the Greek language, Orthodox doctrine, and imperial culture of Byzantium because of their surroundings and background. Uh, they were surrounded by Muslim lifestyle and culture, and they had Syriac as their main language. The third group that the book addresses was based out of Cappadocia and Constantinople, and they were both very important sources for modern Orthodox liturgy. The group was influenced by direct or influenced directly by three major pastor theologians, Gregory of Nazianzus, Basil the Great, and Gregory of Nyssa. The book states that all of these groups of liturgy held some similarities to each other. One of the big similarities was daily prayer. Daily prayer was a very large part of the liturgy in the Eastern Church. It was practiced six or seven times a day within the 24-hour period, and it was considered to be very important. There were several different kinds of prayer that people um, were instructed to pray, so they had to go and do all of those each day. Now, another part that was held by all was the liturgical year, and this sprang up from the Byzantine calendar and it revolved on three cycles. The Paschal cycle, the Otikos, which I don't know if I'm saying correctly, and the cycle of fixed feasts. This is the calendar that people based their religious holidays on. Baptism was another piece of the liturgy that was observed in all three of the major groups. Baptism has changed very slightly over time, but it still remains one of the main points of the liturgy in all of the groups. Basically, what this chapter is trying to say, in my opinion, is that even though there are divisions among it, there are things that are going to be the same in each of them, because of it's like what they believe, I guess.